A little over a month ago, Hurricane Irma struck the Caribbean island of St. Martin very, very hard. Within a couple of days, I got a call from a loved one of a couple of constituents. They had family members trapped at a hotel in St. Martin with dozens of other Americans. The power was out, they were running out of food and water, and incidents of looting were reported. So they called me their congressman, and I called the State Department to see what could be done. Within 36 hours of my call, our U.S. citizens, nearly 150 of them, were evacuated from an island in the ocean surrounded by water. And do you know where they were taken to for safety? Puerto Rico. Yes, Puerto Rico, where it has now been three weeks since Hurricane Maria, and most people don't have power or clean drinking water, and where the deterioration of the healthcare system is leaving people without critical treatments and causing the death toll to go up. Now, in St. Martin, this is what the State Department said, according to NBC News, quote, evacuation efforts will prioritize U.S. citizens needing urgent medical care. And within a few days, they had evacuated 1,200 Americans. So right now, if 1,000 U.S. citizens are facing danger in Japan, Ethiopia, Finland, our State Department would arrange to save them. But if we have millions of Americans facing danger in Puerto Rico and we can't help them, not the military, not FEMA, and not the State Department because, well, they don't assist U.S. citizens who are on U.S. soil, even if that soil is a colony in the ocean surrounded by water, as our president reminds us. 36 hours to get evacuated from St. Martin, three weeks in Puerto Rico, and still no plan for evacuation. And this morning, the president is tweeting that he wants to pull FEMA and the military out of Puerto Rico. How long do we have to stay in Puerto Rico, Mr. President? Until every Puerto Rican's name is taken off the Vietnam Memorial Wall or erased from the records of the Korean War, Afghanistan and Iraq, as long as it takes. They gave their lives and died. Yesterday, a lot of us received military briefings from FEMA, the military and Homeland Security. I wanted to know whether FEMA and the military are prepared to take people off the island as we normally do in emergency situations. We did it in Houston, in Jacksonville, in New Orleans. No, the governor hasn't asked for helping evacuating people, they told me. I asked how many bridges, even temporary ones, have been constructed on Puerto Rico to replace those destroyed by the hurricane to allow for the transportation of supplies and the evacuation of people. None, Congressman, zero. We have not erected any bridges. Again, because the government governor of Puerto Rico hasn't asked us to. When I was there, I flew over the town of Maricao in the mountains, well known for coffee. There are six ways in and out of the town, and five of those bridges are gone. Three weeks after D-Day in 1944, the Allies liberated the deep water port of Cherbourg, one of the most important objectives in France. It took 20 days. We built bridges and communication lines along the way. We made better progress in the three weeks after D-Day than we are making on Puerto Rico. And in Puerto Rico, to the best of my knowledge, there are no Germans shooting at us. Now, when I asked the officials about evacuating people from the island, they had no real answer. But if I remember correctly, FEMA and the military come to us to fund their budget every year. They're accountable to this Congress. And we are accountable to our constituents. Constituents are coming to me, as they did in St. Martin, and they're saying, Help us get our families out of danger's way. Mr. Speaker, when will we be able to give these constituents an answer as to why their family members and loved ones aren't being allowed to leave the island and evacuated from danger? This weekend, members of Congress are going to Puerto Rico, and I spoke with a few of them, and I was saying, hey, you know, at night you should go to this place. And they stopped me. They cut me off. They said, oh, Congressman, we're not staying overnight. So on an island where 85% of the power is out, our members of Congress are only going to see things during the day, not during the pitch black darkness, which is what Puerto Ricans are living with every single night for the last three weeks. Regardless of what my colleagues see during the day or what the president tweets in the morning, my friends who stand in line for hours for food, if they can find it, my constituents worried about their family members, and five million Puerto Ricans in the diaspora have run out of patience. We want our people free to live in the United States of America wherever they can. Mr. Speaker, my constituents want the government to help get their families out of danger's way.